of October, the tenth month of the year 2022, and the beginning of the last quarter of the year, our God who has brought us thus far this year will see us to the very end of the year and into the new year in the name of Jesus Christ. Bow your hearts as we pray shortly. Heavenly Father, we ask that you speak to us this day. Your very words that will illuminate our hearts and encourage us and challenge us. We pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This morning, let me ask you a question which is based on the theme which I have set for this morning's meditation. The theme I set is man's obligation to God. And the question I want to ask you is this. Have you ever thought of what constitutes priority to you? What is the one thing that you consider as priority? Or if I put it in another way, what is the one thing that is most important in life? To you? What takes your attention the most? I know that many of us have never given this a thought. So we wander through life being tossed about by different things that come our way in life. In the book of Matthew, chapter 22, from verse 34. We have the record of a discussion that took place between Jesus Christ and some Pharisees. Their spokesman had asked Jesus about which law or commandment of God matters most. They wanted to know because they, they are fond of doing debates amongst themselves. Out of all the over 600 laws and commandments and scriptures in the Old Testament, which one they consider to be most important. I like the way Jesus masterfully answered them. He summarized man's obligation to God as the most important thing in life. Your obligation to God is the most important thing in life. And what is this obligation? Jesus summarized it this way. He, he read verse 37 there, and it said, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. If you roll back to St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 12, verse 30, that adds to that statement and all your strength. So you see, it says, You love the Lord with all your heart with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. That is the totality of you. The implication of this is that man's first obligation is to love God with the totality of your being. Heart, soul, mind, and strength. It has been said that the heart is the center of desire and affections. And that's why you have to set your desires and affection on God and not onto things. If we look at the world we live today, there's a law of destruction where man sets his affection to things. Some is to their vehicle, their very, very expensive vehicle they bought, some to their garden, some to the business or the money they have. What have you set your own affection to? What is it that dominates your heart the most? Is it God or is it things? May the Lord help you and help us in general about it in the name of Jesus Christ. The second one is the soul. The soul is a person's being and uniqueness. Each one of us has a unique soul. What we need to do is to surrender this uniqueness to God. Let me ask you, have you surrendered your life to the Lord Jesus Christ? Is it the one who controls you or you're still struggling, controlling everything to him? You need to surrender your life to the Lord Jesus and let Jesus direct you and let him guide you. 
The third is the mind. The mind is the center of a person's intellect itself. Feed it with the word of God. These days, people feed their mind with all sorts of jargons, intellectual jargons. So many people, even in the academia, have lost it. They've forgotten about God. Even those of us who are ordinary people, what do we feed our mind with? Some feed our mind with some magazines. Some feed our mind with some music that has no, no head or tail. Some feed our minds with other things. But how much time do you spend in the study of the word of God? The psalmist says, I have hidden your word in my heart so that I will not sin against you. Brothers, what have you hidden in your own heart itself? So you see, your center of intellect, have you taken the word of God? The psalmist also says, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path itself. So what lightens your own path if you have not fed yourself with the word of God? And the fourth is your strength, your physical nature. You need to serve God with your strength. This is where it gets really interesting. What do you do with your energy? Are you serving God in any way at the moment? Is it even interesting to you to want to serve God? That is what we see. Nowadays, people are not interested to offer themselves for service in the house of God. Or even in whichever way that is related to God. Your strength also should be used to serve God. To honor God. Honor God with your strength. Don't use your strength for things that are dishonoring. Use your strength for things that will honor God. So that is the totality of your being. I mentioned earlier on that Jesus was quoting from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. It shows that a person's total being must be involved in loving God. Are you giving God just a bit or the totality of your life, of your being? Only you can answer that question, whether you are. So if you really, really, really want to serve God, you need to give him everything. Surrender it all unto him. Nothing must be held back because God did not hold anything back for you. He gave his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to die for you and me so that we shall be saved. So if God did not hold back for us, shouldn't we to release everything we have, the totality of our being? Unto him. The word for love used in Jesus' statement, agapeo, means unselfish love, total unselfish love. Now, that is the enabling word that allows you to serve the Lord with all that you have. It has to be unselfish love that will enable you to do this. This love, you can only manifest it with the help of the Holy Spirit. Man, as man alone, is not capable of manifesting this unselfish love. This unselfish love can only be manifested in the power of the Holy Spirit. Do you allow the Holy Spirit to direct you, to walk in you, to lead you? In the first case, if you are not a born-again child of God, the Holy Spirit is not in you. But if you have surrendered your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, then the Holy Spirit is at work in you to guide you, to direct you, to lead you in all things. We should show love by doing things we would never do, except doing it for God's sake. That's a very, very important statement. You know, there are many things in life we won't do except we did it for the sake of God. Then God says, love your neighbor. Love your enemy, sorry. 
How many of us wants to love our enemies? Except God. Except the Spirit of God walking through us, we are allowed to do it. The law of agapeo that we're talking about is what makes you to do things that you don't want to do, but you do it for the sake of God, because of God. Friends, this new month, what are the things you're going to do because for the sake of God? You know, if I take that passage further down a bit more, Jesus said the second commandment is love your neighbor as yourself. Time will not permit us to go deep into that. Because if he says love your neighbor as yourself, friends, we love ourselves. I mean, I will buy clothes for myself. I will make sure I'm looking good and things. I'll take myself on holidays. I will buy food for myself and eat good food and all these luxuries. Friends, are you prepared to do that for your neighbor? Take them on holiday, buy nice food for them, do all those nice, buy nice clothes for them. Do all those things that you do for yourself, for your neighbor. It's only if agapeo, the love of God is in you, that you are enabled to do this one. So, your obligation to God is to love God with the totality of your being. And when you do that, you begin to see that you manifest the love of God. And this you show by the things you do to people around you. Then we know certainly this man or this woman loves God. This new month, I encourage you to surrender the totality of your being unto God and let Him direct you in the power of your Holy Spirit, in the power of His Holy Spirit. God bless you as you do this. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.